We'll rise up and pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for our brethren, brothers and sisters, our young people and their parents who are here tonight. We just glorify your name for the joy of the Lord and for the joy to sit at the table of the Lord and to take of this wonderful spiritual food. We pray that you feed us to satisfaction tonight in Jesus' name. Explain your word to us. Apply the word to us. And make us better, richer, higher, greater in the things of the Lord. As we study your word tonight in Jesus' name. Bless your people tonight, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're back to Matthew chapter 7. And in Matthew chapter 7, we're looking at verses 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Open your Bible with me as we read together. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you? Whom if his son asked bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent, a snake? If he then being evil, that means being evil by nature, before the grace of God transforms you. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? As we look at these verses of scripture, we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is talking about prayer. Last week we looked at the word ask. Come to verse 7. Ask, it shall be given you. And then we notice that in every verse of this passage we have the word ask. In verse 8, for everyone that asketh receiveth. And then in verse 9, or what man is there of you if his son shall ask bread? Will he give him a stone? Then in verse 10, we notice the word is there again. Or if he ask a fish. And then in verse 11, if you then be evil, nor to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? The word ask, you find, is there all throughout. Then we noticed last week that if you give the first letter of ask and the first letter of seek, and the first letter of knock, you have A-S-K. And that again is ask. Tonight, we're concentrating on the word seek. Look at verse 7. Seek, and you shall find. Still in verse 8. And he that seeketh, findeth. Those are the things we're looking at today. Christ's promise for seeking God by prayer. These statements from the lips of the Lord Jesus Christ are very simple to ask, to seek, to knock. And yet, as simple as they are, they are sublime, they are great, they are high. These are not words to be hurriedly read through and then forgotten. They are words that open our eyes to heaven's provision. And it is close the great storehouse from which all our needs for the spirit, for the soul, for the body are supplied. Learning from the Lord on prayer as declared in these verses and living as he has taught, practicing the precepts without turning to the right or to the left will bring supernatural things into our natural lives. I will actually open both the windows of heaven and the gate of heaven to every one of us. I pray that these studies will enrich your life, enrich your family. Because you see, these verses will make the present and the future much better, much brighter than the past, however bright or however good our past had been. Praying to God has been a common practice since the creation of man. 
both sinners and saints have always prayed. However, by the time that the Lord Jesus Christ came to the land of Israel, prayer had become a ritual among the heathen. And then it became a religious duty among the Israelites. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, reading from verse 5, it says, When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. They turned prayer to rituals. And they turned prayer to just religious duty. And the Lord said, When you pray, don't be like them. Because they love to pray standing in the synagogues. And in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. And thy father will say, in secret shall reward thee openly. He will reward you. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. You see, on the one hand, he spoke about the hypocrites in Israel. On the other hand, he spoke about the heathen, the pagans, who didn't actually know God, or are just making vain repetition as the heathen do. For they seek that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not she therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. And so you find that the Lord Jesus Christ spent quite some time in chapter 6 talking about prayer. After he said all this, then he said, when you pray, here is how to pray, a father which art in heaven. We studied that already. Christ, the son of righteousness, the light of the world, now throws light on this great privilege of praying. He clears the way to the Father. And he removes all misconception concerning prayer. He lifts us up from the dark lane of beggars pleading for crumbs to the blessed presence of the Father, confidently asking for the promised blessings. He has taken away the seat and the place of the intermediary. That is somebody standing between you and the Almighty God. He tells us now we can talk to the Father directly. And we don't need a Mary to stand between us and God. And we don't need a Peter, a Paul, a saint, whether living or dead, to stand between us and the Almighty God. He has taken away the seat and the place and the position and the deception of an intermediary. And now we can approach God. God directly and say our Father who art in heaven and then the answers will come down as we ask as we seek as we knock the windows and the gates of heaven will be open unto us in Jesus name now he beckons us to come directly to the Father he gives each of us a special place in the family and now we can ask we can seek and we can knock. And the answer will come. And your own answer will come. I told you last week, when you receive a letter, you just don't open the letter immediately. You look at the address at the back. Who is this letter reaching to? And the same thing I need to tell you this week, when it says, seek and you shall find. And then it says, he that seeketh, find it. Who is he addressing? Who is he talking to? We must find out so that you don't take what belongs to all the people when you identify that you are the recipient of the promise, that you are the one is speaking to, then you'll be able to open it and say, This is mine. Seek and you shall find. And hey, let's look at the people he's talking to. Look at chapter 7, verse 11. If ye then being evil, know how to give good gifts to you unto your children, how much more shall your father, your father give, and which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him. He's talking to the people that can refer to God as their father who is in heaven. Look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Your father who is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. 
Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Those are the people he's talking to. The people that have the conviction, the testimony, the witness of the Spirit of God. We are children of God. And God, the God of heaven and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is our Father. Those are the people who have turned away from their sins and they have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. As a result of that repentance and faith in Christ, they have become the children of God. And they can say, God is our Father who is in heaven. Those are the people Jesus addressed and he said, Seek and you shall find. Every one of those children of God that seeks always finds. Look at chapter 5 verse 44. Matthew chapter 5 verse 44 But I say unto you Love your enemies Bless them that curse you Do good to them that hate you And pray for them which despitefully use you And persecute you That ye may be the children of your father Which is in heaven Those are the people The people have got grace in their hearts Bitterness is no more in their hearts Hatred is no more in their hearts. Malice is no more in their hearts. They love their enemies. They bless those who curse them. They do good to those who hate them. And they pray for those who despitefully use them and persecute them. And they can say, praise the Lord. We're children of our Heavenly Father. Those are the people that Jesus said, seek and you shall find. Nor can it shall be opened unto you. He that seeketh findeth. And then verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Those are the people Jesus is talking to. The people that will not excuse imperfection, tolerate imperfection, cover up imperfection, defend imperfection. The people that I want to be like my heavenly Father. He is my father. He is holy. I want to be holy. He is righteous. I want to be righteous. He is good. I want to be good. Be therefore perfect as your father which is in heaven is perfect. Those are the people Jesus said. Now because the spirit of God is bearing witness in your heart. And your life is testifying to it. And then there is this experience of being adopted into the family of God. Now you can seek and you will find. You will find. Chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do. For they seek that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Those are the people, the people who are no more pagans. Those are the people Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. And you know, there are people that will just take a verse of the scripture out and they do not make any connection. They do not understand what had Jesus said before this time. And who are the people Jesus Christ is talking to? The people who have been converted from heathenism unto Christ-likeness. The people who have turned around, they're no more heathens. They're no more pagans. Their lives, their thoughts, their practices, their principles have totally changed. Heathenism or paganism is taken away from their lives and from their hearts. Those are the people Jesus said, seek and you shall find. We're looking at chapter 6, verse 32. For after all these things, the Gentiles seek for your heavenly Father. You see that? He's talking to the people that have confidence and conviction. That God, the God of heaven, is their Father. We need to, we need to spell out this very clearly so that somebody will not just take a verse of scripture and jump up and run with it and say, say it says, seek and ye shall find. You must find out first. Are you a child of God? Is the God of heaven your heavenly Father? It says, for your heavenly Father knows that she have need of all these things. But seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. The people who put the kingdom of God first. 
the people who put holiness first, righteousness first, Christian character first, integrity first, honesty first. Those are the people Jesus said, now that you are children of God, and now that you belong to the Heavenly Father, ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Somebody is asking, but isn't everyone that is born into this world a child of God? Isn't that promise belonging to everybody? John chapter 8. In John chapter 8, we're reading from verse 38. John chapter 8, verse 38. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Do you notice the two fathers there? My father, capital F. Your father, small F, verse 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus says unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me. I'm the son of God. If you are the children of God, the children of God will not attempt to kill the son of God. If we belong to the same father, we'll have affection and love, acceptance of one another. And then he says over here, he said, If you are Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham, but now you seek to kill me. A man that has told you the truth, which have heard of God, this did not Abraham, ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Now verse 44 is very important. Hear of your father, the devil. Now you will see what Jesus Christ was saying. He was saying, it is not everybody in the synagogue that's a child of God. It's not everybody in the temple that's a child of God. It's not everybody in the tabernacle that is a child of God. It's not everybody in the hall of meeting that's a child of God. It's not everybody in the local church, physical church, visible church that's a child of God. It said in verse 44, ye of your father the devil and the loss of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. That is, those who are still in lying. They are not the children of God. They are the children of the devil. So they cannot come and say, Jesus said, ask. And it shall be given you. He said that to do so, children of God. Seek, and ye shall find. That's a promise he gave to the children of God. They cannot say, said, no, and it shall be opened unto you. He gave that promise to the children of God. We're looking at First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 1. First John chapter 3 verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. The people Jesus gave the promise to other people have tasted of the love of God. The love coming from Calvary. Because of that, they have believed that love. They have accepted that love. Their sins are forgiven. Their sins are taken away. As a result of that, they can now ask, it shall be given unto them. They can seek and they will find. They can knock and the door will be opened unto them. Behold what manner of love. The Father has bestowed upon us that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. 
Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone, every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. The recipients of the promise were looking at that the people that love purity. They do not rejoice in iniquity. They do not rejoice in impurity. If they find impurity at all in their lives, they're going back to the fountain of the blood of the Lamb. They're saying, oh Lord, I don't appreciate impurity in my life at all. Cleanse me, wash me, purify me. I want to be pure. I see is pure. The people that appreciate purity and they have affection for purity and they love purity and they desire to be pure and they have this hope in themselves, those are the people Jesus said, you are the children of the heavenly father and seek and you shall find. He that seeketh, findeth. That's what we are looking at tonight. The promise of Christ for seeking God by prayer. I'm going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, all embracing promises to seekers of God who pray. Seeking God by prayer. The all embracing promises of God for those who are seeking God by prayer. Number two, the all consuming peril. For not seeking God in prayer. Those who will not seek God in prayer. The peril, the punishment, the perdition that comes upon them. Number three, the all-inclusive prosperity for seekers of God in prayer. This year is going to be a year of all-round prosperity. All-inclusive prosperity. In the soul, in the mind, in your profession, in your family. God is going to shower blessings down this year. Let's come to point number one. The all embracing promises to seekers of God by prayer. Matthew chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. This word seek there. What's that talking about? It's talking about prayer. You see, as you go back to the Old Testament, you're going to find out when people are said to be seeking God and seeking God and seeking God, it means they were praying. Maybe many people do not know that. When it says seek and ye shall find, it's talking about praying. And then it says in verse 8, he that seeketh, actually he that prays, he that seeketh, findeth. And let's look at, um, at Daniel chapter 9. You'll see that when it says you are seeking God, it means you are praying. You are praying, you are seeking God. You are seeking God and then you are praying. Daniel chapter 9. We're reading from verses 3 and 4. Daniel chapter 9, verses 3 and 4. This is to convince us. That seeking God is actually praying unto God. In Daniel chapter 9 verse 3. And I set my face unto God to seek by prayer and supplication. To seek the Lord by prayer and supplication. With fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession. And, and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. So you will see the language of Daniel. He said, I set my face to seek God. Daniel, what do you mean by seeking God? I mean, I set time apart to pray, to seek the face of the Lord in prayer was he answered of course he was answered look at verse 20 and whilst i was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people israel and presenting my supplication before the lord my god for the holy mountain of my god yea whilst i was speaking in prayer even the man gabriel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation, and informed me, and talked with me, and said, O Daniel, I am now come for to give thee skill and understanding. 
As you search your faith seeking the Lord, then the answer will come speedily in Jesus' name. Now we're looking at Second Chronicles. What we're doing here is to convince you and convince everyone herein that when we say seeking God, it means praying. In Second Chronicles chapter 7, we're looking at verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And pray and seek my face. Praying is seeking the face of the Lord. Seeking the face of the Lord is praying. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways. Here is a promise now. Then I will hear from heaven. Do you know as you seek the face of the Lord tonight, He will hear from heaven. And then it says, And I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Uh, let's look at this. It's still, it's still convincing us that when we say you're seeking God, it actually means that you're praying. It means you're calling upon the name of the Lord. You're saying, Oh Lord, here is my challenge. Here is my difficulty. And then you concentrate upon the Lord seeking him. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 1. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Reading from verse 1. It came to pass after this also. That the children of Moab and the children of Ammon. With them other beside the Ammonites. Came against Jehoshaphat to battle. A great army came against him. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea unto the side Syria. And behold, they be in Azazontema, which is Engedi. And then it says in verse 3, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord, that's the word, to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. That's to pray. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. So then you see, when the New Testament says you are seeking the Lord, it means you are praying. When you are praying, you are seeking the face of the Lord. Here we learn about Jehoshaphat. He had a great army against him. And he saw that there will be defeat. There will be crushed. He will be defeated if he didn't pray. And then it says, he set the time apart and sought the face of the Lord in prayer. And that seeking the face of the Lord and praying was the one who was saying that gave him the victory. Just like at the beginning of this year now you are setting your set apart. And you are seeking the face of the Lord in prayer. There is victory for this year. And you are going to overcome every challenge that comes against your life this year. As you seek the Lord in prayer in Jesus name. No enemy will be able to conquer you. No power of darkness will be able to conquer you. And no matter their force and no matter how many of them are joined together. They are coming from this side. They are coming from this side. They are coming from the other side. As you know the secret of victory. Is that you push everything aside and say this challenge that plagued the old year. This difficulty that almost destroyed me in the old year. This new year, I'm going to seek the face of the Lord. And when you seek the face of the Lord by prayer, you're going to overcome in Jesus' name. Now let me tell you something, that the problems that come in the new year, they are very, very similar to the problems of the old year. You know, Satan doesn't have any new, any new vision or any new desire, any new method. What he's doing today is what he did before. And so you will find out that the problems, the challenges, the mountains, the difficulties that appear in this new year, they are very much the same. They look like the problems of the old year. Let me tell you something now. The method you used in the old year did not solve the problem. It only increased the problem. It aggravated the situation. And so this new year you say, ah, wait a minute. It's the same kind of problem I had last year that is coming this year. And look at the method I used last year. 
And the method did not solve the problem last year. If I am wise, I'm not going to keep on using methods that never work. I'm not going to keep on doing things that never bring good results. Therefore, now I know in the new year, I'm going to have a new method. What's that new method? Seeking the face of the Lord. It is when you change your method, you change your approach, and you say, uh-uh, I'm not going to use the method that failed last year and just increase the problem. In this new year, now I know the secrets, new method, New year, new year, new approach, a new vision, new direction. I'm going to change. I'm not going to keep on using those old, old, cranky methods that never work. The methods that work, seeking the Lord, praying unto the Lord, standing before the Lord and saying, Lord, you will remove this mountain. You will remove this problem. And I'm telling you this year, if you change your method, everything will change. And your problems will be solved in Jesus' name. Ezra chapter 8. In Ezra chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 21. Then I proclaimed a fast. I proclaimed a fast there. At the river Ahava. That we might afflict ourselves before our God. To seek of him. That's the word again. To seek of him. A right way for us. And for our little ones. And for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king. A band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way. Because we had spoken unto the king saying. The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this. And he was entreated of us. Ezra needed protection as he was going on the journey. Because the roads were dangerous. Normally, he should have asked of the king, and the king would have given him some bodyguards, some soldiers that would protect them in the way. But he said, we didn't ask the king. And we told the king, don't worry, king, God will take care of us. And then when he got to the road, he saw that there was danger. And he said, okay, even though we didn't ask the king, if we don't have natural help, we're going to have supernatural help. If we don't have help on earth, we're going to have help from heaven. If we don't have help down below, we're going to have help from above. And so we sought the face of the Lord. We set ourselves to seek the face of the Lord in prayer. And then he said, the Lord was entreated on their behalf. He answered their prayer. Like he answered their prayer, he has answered your prayer already. Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. And I'm reading there from verse 10. Now you understand that seeking uh, the Lord is used in the sense of praying. As the scriptures we have now read show us very clearly. But you know, if you're seeking something, you must put on the light so that you'll be able to see very clearly. Praying in ignorance is like seeking for a precious hidden object in the dark. We must turn on the light so that we can see clearly while we seek diligently. Ignorance of the promises of God. Ignorance of the fatherhood of the merciful, loving God. Ignorance of the faithfulness of God as Father. Ignorance of the relationship of sonship that we have to the heavenly father will keep us from seeking with faith i will not be able to receive will be denied because there is no faith that's why you enlighten yourself in the word of god educate yourself in the word of god read over the promises of god once again and know he that seeketh findeth and when you seek the lord according to his will According to his word, according to the promises, the Lord will answer. Give me a good amen. Yeah. 
the promises that we'll find in the Bible are many and they are varied. And, and they are all encompassing. The promises that we have, they are both for the natural needs and for the spiritual needs. Our common needs as well as our special needs and peculiar needs are all addressed, all provided for. Early in life or late in life, we can seek the Lord. When we're young or when we're growing older, we can seek the Lord. Even at death, the promises of God are still unchanging. At death, we're simply changing our earthly residence, our earthly address for an eternal residence. And the appropriate promises of God are always there. does not matter your condition, your situation, and the things that surround you. The promises are always there. Whether you're in the midst of other people, you're all alone by yourself. The promises are there for us. We're in the family, or maybe you've lost your husband, you've lost your wife, you're a widow, you're a widow. You have promises in the Bible that are just for you. Or it is when you are sick, or when you are healthy, the promises are yes and amen. Or when you are weak, or when you are strong. Or maybe you are in prosperity, or you are in adversity. In all situations, in all circumstances, God's promises are ours to experience. And those promises, you'll experience them today in Jesus' name. You see, the promises of God are unlimited. The promises of God, they're very much expansive, extensive. And therefore, whatever your situation, whatever your circumstance, and whatever the place you are, whatever challenges you're facing, you will find that those promises are there. And like all those people of the Bible did, like Joshua did, like Ezra did, like Daniel did, you will set time apart and you will seek the face of the Lord in prayer. And the Lord will answer your prayer in Jesus' name. Circumstances should not embitter our lives when God is our Father. And he has thought of all things that we would ever need in a pilgrimage until we see him face to face in heaven. Read the Bible and see the promises. Note the conditions attached to those promises. Keep those conditions as the patients who go to the doctors keep the doctor's prescription. Don't omit anything. Don't modify anything. Believe God as much as you believe. A loving, faithful, earthly father. In fact, you ought to believe God more than you believe any human person. Any friend or father, trust God implicitly without any shadow of doubt. Seek and you will find. Pray and God will answer. In Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 10. For thus says the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished of Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good words toward you in causing you to return to this place for i know the thoughts that i think toward you let me explain that to you the children of israel had rebelled against the lord and because of that prolonged rebellion the lord said i'm going to send you to captivity 70 years will be accomplished on you and they went to babylon and now the 70 years were about finishing. And it's like, you know, because they have been there for 70 years, will God ever remember us? And then God said, after those 70 years, the punishment, the discipline will not be forever. And it says, because I know the thoughts I think I have towards you. In verse 11 now, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me. And ye shall go and pray. And I will hearken unto you. 
in verse 13, and ye shall seek me. You know what he said in verse 12? Ye shall go and pray unto me. And then in verse 13, ye shall seek me, which means seeking the Lord and praying. They're synonymous. They're the same. And then it says, ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. In verse 14, and I will be found of you, says the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. I need an amen there. Yeah. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place where I caused you to be carried away captive. The Lord will do it. Yeah. We will seek the Lord according to his promise. He answers our prayer. And then he makes us to find him. Zechariah chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 21. Seeking the Lord. And praying unto the Lord. The same thing. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 21. And inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying. Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. You see those two words together? To pray to the Lord, to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also, verse 22, yea, many people and strong nations shall come and seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. You see those two words used together? To seek the Lord and then to pray. Then in verse 23, thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days uh, it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations. Even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. This year people will know that God is with you. When you see those miracles in your life, when you see the power of God in your life, when you see the protection, the provision, when you see all the great things the Lord will do in your life, this year they will say, I'm going with you. Which church do you go? I want to follow you today. They will follow you and they will come. And then great will be their blessings in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two now. All consuming peril for not seeking God in prayer. You know when the Lord said seek, and you shall find. He expects us that we'll say, that's a great chance, a great opportunity. He expects us to say, that's a great privilege. I'm going to seek the Lord. But if we abandon that privilege, we forsake that privilege, and instead of seeking God, then we abandon him and seek for hell. From the powers of darkness, from the agents of darkness, God frowns at that. God is unhappy with that. That's why we're looking at this side now. The all-consuming peril, punishment, perdition for not seeking God in prayer. Let's look at Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 16. And I'm reading from verse 12. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 12. You will see these people that didn't seek the Lord. And the Lord took note of that. He wasn't happy about that at all. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 12. And Asa, in the 39th year of his reign, was diseased in his feet. Had sickness, disease, ailment in his feet until his disease was exceeding great yet in his disease he sought not to the lord but to the physicians those were the local people those were the traditional people those were the herbalists of those days he was seeking to the herbalists and to the native people instead of seeking the lord in fact what's the name of this man i read about now in verse 12 what's his name Tell me out loud. Let me show you something about him. But what a tragedy. What a tragedy. This man is, sir, he was actually a godly man. He had sought the Lord before. He wasn't ignorant of the power of God. And now at the 39th year, after seeking the Lord for so long, 
Now here the problem is sort of remembering. Seek and ye shall find. Everyone that seeketh findeth. He wasn't a novice. He wasn't ignorant of the fact that God is there. You can ask the Lord. Hey, look at him. Chapter 14 verse 2. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord is God. For he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and break down the images and cut down the grooves and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law and the commandments. He wasn't a novice in seeking the Lord. He had sought the Lord before. Look at verse 7. Therefore he said unto Judah, Let us build these cities and make about them walls and towers and gates and bars while the land is yet before us because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought. That's the past tense of seeking. We have sought the Lord our God. We have sought him and he has given us rest on every side and they built and prospered. This man was not ignorant of the power of God. He was not ignorant of the promises of the Lord. He was not ignorant of the greatness of the Lord. He was not ignorant of the fact that God answers prayer. But now at the thirty-ninth year of his reign, after seeking the Lord for so long, then instead of seeking after the Lord, he began to seek unto the traditional healers of the land. I pray that will not happen to you. Look at verse 11. In verse 11 it says, And Asa cried unto the Lord his God, and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee. And in thy name we go against this multitude, O Lord, thou art our God. Let not man prevail against thee. And the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah. And the Ethiopians fled. This was a man that knew how to pray, how to seek the Lord. And the Lord had answered his prayer. But look at the late hour. How he backslid. And then began to seek traditional healers. And began to seek the people that were using magic to heal. And what he was seeking now the herbalists. After he had sought the Lord for so many years. I pray it will not happen to you. Chapter 15 verse 2. And he went out to meet Asa. And said to him, Hear ye me, Asa. And all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. If ye seek him, he will be found of you. If ye forsake him, he will forsake you. Look at verse 7. Be strong, therefore, let not your hands be weak. For your work shall be rewarded. Look at verse 12. And he entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their hearts. And with all their soul, and that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman, and they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice, and with shouting, and with trumpet, and with cornets. This is the same person who had been seeking the Lord for so many years. In fact, look at what the Lord did for him. Verse 19 of chapter 15. And there was no more war until the five and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa. Thirty-five years, no war. Rest, peace, tranquility, prosperity. Because he sought the Lord. And now chapter 16 verse 12. And Asa, in the thirty and ninth year of his reign, was diseased in his feet, until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. And Asa slept with his fathers, 
and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. The last two years of his life, he actually died in the, you know, in the place or in the hands of Habali. Think about that. What a tragedy. Reminds me of, you know, somebody in the church, in this church some years ago. I'd been following the Lord. I'd been serving the Lord, praying, seeking the Lord, claiming the promises of God, going to retreat and going to all those meetings, and we all rejoicing together. In fact, he was a worker. And in the end, he became sick. And we have had all these great testimonies of what God has done in our retreats, in our crusades, in our revival, our everywhere. We're part of the great testimonies. And then we were praying for him. And you know, it may take two or three days and before you recover. And then his people came from the village. And his people said they wanted to take him. And the people in the zone, the people, they ran it, they said, no, he's our brother. And then, uh, you know, he told the people in the zone, they are my people. Since they want to take me, let them take me. And then I will come back. When I come back, just be praying for me in the zone, in the district. When I come back, everything will be all right. They took him to a herbalist. It was in the house of that herbalist he died. Think about that, like Asa. That's why this year is a year of seeking the Lord. And we're going to keep on seeking the Lord in Jesus' name. You're sick, you want to be healed. God says, come, he will heal you. You're married and there is no child yet. God will bless you. You will have children. I said you will have children. You have certificate, there is no job. God will give you a job. And the enemies are pursuing you. I'm telling you this year, all those enemies will be driven away in Jesus' name. Why you belong to a church like this? A church where we pray every time. Sometimes we pray on phone. And they don't they're not even here. We pray for people far, far away. Our national overseer from El Zambia is here tonight. The brother from the overseer from Botswana is gone. He's come back. I spoke to him on phone uh, today. He's now back in Botswana. Somebody was sick 1,000 miles away from the capital of Botswana. He himself, a medical doctor. He might be hearing me now because we're transmitting the Bible study to them. He's a medical doctor himself. His case was beyond, you know, the medical science. And then a national overseer from Botswana phone, he said, Pastor, a brother so and so is dying. This is the condition. And I said, can you tell him that from the hospital, he was on the hospital bed. I said, give him the phone there. And then over here, I was over here. And then I prayed. I said, brother, are you there? I said, yes, I can hear you, Pastor. He was barely able to talk. And then I prayed over the phone. It didn't take long, they discharged him. God healed him on the phone, on the phone, without any direct contact. If God is doing that for people who are thousands and thousands of kilometers and miles away, just praying on the phone, I about those of us who are here. I said those of us who are here, this year you are in for a miracle. And so there should not be any case of some who have been together, who have been serving God together. You are born again, you are sanctified, you are purified, and you are seeking the Lord. Run into the Bible study, God will not forget your sacrifice. And if you have any problem, you have any sickness, you can call. And if you are not able to see me, why? We use telephone also at headquarters in Lagos here. And those are, are coordinators and group coordinators. Somebody is sick. This is very urgent. And you can't wait until Sunday. Why don't you just call a church secretary? And the church secretary will contact me. And then on the phone, we'll set you it right there. And the miracle will be transferred to your location where you are. And the same thing with all our states, all our, all our regions. It's not even necessary, you know, people travel all the long, long journey. We don't need all the long journey. And you can just say, uh, you know, phone us if you are not able to get me, get a just secretary. And, and then he sees me almost every day, almost every day. And then we connect together. This year is a year of miracle. Nobody listening to this Bible study, a part of this family of God, will die in the house of a herbalist. Uh, let's go on. We're looking at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 28. 1 Samuel chapter 28. I'm reading to you there from verse 3. 1 Samuel chapter 28. 
reading from verse 23. 28 verse 3, rather verse 3. Now Samuel was dead. And all the all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizard out of the land. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and the pitch in Gilboa. When, and when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid. And his, and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dream, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. That's no strange, that's no strange thing. He began to pray. He had almost lost the habit of praying, the ability to pray, to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said, ah, now you remember me. What have you been waiting for? And the Lord did not answer the first day, the second day. When Daniel prayed, the first day said did not come. He stayed there. Second day, he stayed there. The seventh day, he stayed there. The fifteenth day, he stayed there. Until the twenty-first day. And when he prayed, on that twenty-first day, then the answer came. But Saul, he couldn't wait and seek the face of the Lord. He was too much in a hurry. Look at what he did now in verse 7. And then it says, Then Saul said unto his servant, Seek me, woman that has a familiar spirit. See that. Since God has not answered, one day, two days, three days I prayed, and there's no answer, I will not waste time with God. Seek me, woman that has a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And the servant said, Behold, there is a woman that has a familiar spirit at end of. And Saul disguised himself and put on all the raiment and went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night and said, I pray thee divine unto me by the familiar spirit and bring him up. Whom I shall name unto thee. Instead of seeking the Lord, he abandoned God and then he sought familiar spirit to give him solution to his problem. Seek the Lord. Don't seek herbalists. Don't seek the traditional healers. Don't seek witchcraft. Don't seek the people that have magic, talisman. Don't seek all those paths of darkness. Seek the Lord. See what happened to him. First Chronicles chapter 10. First Chronicles chapter 10. Verse 13 and verse 14. So Saul died for his transgression. Which he committed against the Lord. Even against the word of the Lord. Which he kept not. And also for asking counsel of one. That had a familiar spirit. To inquire of it. God doesn't want any of his children to seek. After those that have familiar spirit. Evil power. Second Kings. I'm reading from chapter 1. Second Kings chapter 1. I'm reading verses 1 and 2. Second Kings chapter 1. Reading from verse 2. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice. In his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say unto them, is it not because there is not a God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the king of Ekron? Now therefore, thus says the Lord, thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shall surely die. You see, God doesn't want us to seek after those herbalists, traditional healers, all those people that use parts of Satan, seek the Lord. You have a problem. You want to get married. You're looking for children. 
You want a job. You want yokes to be broken. You want your mountains to move away. Seek the Lord. Don't seek after those powers of darkness. You will compound your problem. Let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter 25. 2 Chronicles, I'm reading from chapter 25. And we're looking at verse 14. Now it came to pass after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, that he brought the gods, small g, the gods of the children of Seir, and set up to be his gods, and bowed down himself before them, and burnt incense unto them. Wherefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah, and sent unto him a prophet who said unto him, Why hast thou sought after the gods of the people, which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand? And it came to pass, as he talked with him, that the king said unto him, Art thou made of the king's counsel? Forbear, why shouldest thou be smitten? Then the prophet forbear and said, I know that the Lord has determined to destroy thee because thou hast done this thing and has not hearkened unto my counsel. Here is the king. He went to battle. God gave him victory. After he got the victory and he defeated those people, he took their idols, their gods, and brought their idols back home to worship. And then God sent a prophet to him and said, what are you doing? These people, you have defeated them. Their gods, their idols were not powerful enough to deliver them from your hand. Why have you done this? And the king became angry. Angry at counseling. Angry at correction. Angry at teaching. Angry at the revelation of the mind of God. Saying, this is not right. How could you do this? He became angry. And the prophet said, I know the Lord has determined to destroy you because you will not listen to correction or counseling. Let's look at verse 20 there. In verse 20, but Amaziah would not hear. I pray you are here. I said, you will hear. Amaziah would not hear, for it came of God that he might deliver them into the hand of their enemies because they sought after the gods of Edom. Isaiah chapter 8. In Isaiah chapter 8, I'm reading to you from verse 19 and verse 20. Isaiah chapter 8. Reading from verse 19. And verse 20. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits. When your relatives will tell you, This problem is too much. If your church has not been able to give you a wife, Why don't you come? We'll do something for you. We'll give you powder. We'll give you a solution. We'll give you this. You rub it on your face. Men will be running after you. How is it? You've got certificate and there's no job. If your church has not been able to give you something after all this, come. We'll help you. When they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead, to the law, and to the testimony? Let's go back to the Bible. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. You have got the light now. And you will not seek after all those things. Jeremiah chapter 10. In Jeremiah chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 21. Jeremiah chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 21. For the pastors have become brutish and have not sought the Lord. Therefore, they shall not prosper and all their flocks shall be scattered. We thank God for our pastors and leaders in this church. And I can tell you, 
all the pastors here, all the ministers here, from the local church to the region to the state to the nation, we depend upon God. Give me a good amen. amen. And all those miracles and great miracles are taking place. I'm just getting reports from some national overseers. The programs they held. And then I'm sharing with some state overseers uh, the programs they held in the past years. How God visited them. Not even when I was with them. On their own. When they have all these great, great programs. God is working miracles through every one of us. And I can tell you it is by the Spirit of God. It is by the power of God. But you know, there are some people, some pastors out there. You don't know them. I don't know them. I don't know where they're, where they're coming from. That we just say that a miracle is taking place there. A miracle is taking place there. There are some people that are not seeking the Lord. They're seeking after magic. They're seeking after evil power. They're seeking after the powers of darkness. Witchcraft. To give them whatever anointing they want. You don't want to go there. You don't want to subject yourself to the people that you don't know the source of their power. That's what it says there in Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 21. For the pastors, those pastors, I don't mean any pastor in particular. I'm not referring to any church in particular. But we know. That there are people that seek after evil powers. Don't label anybody. Don't mention anybody's name because you are not sure. The people you are sure of, you are sure of your own local pastor. Go to them. You are sure of your own ministers who are here. You visit them. You go to their houses. Go to them. You are sure of the people that minister to you here. Go to them. The other people are outside there. Maybe they are good. Maybe they are great. Some of them are great. Some of them are wonderful. Some of them are real, real power of God. I'm telling you. You don't have to be in deeper life to have genuine power. Well, some of the great men of God outside deeper life, they have great power coming from God. No evil power. But at the same time, there are people that have evil power. Go to these people in your own locality that you're hearing the teaching. You know their lives. You know their families. Go to them. And the power of God will not fail in your life in Jesus' name. Verse 21, Jeremiah chapter 10. For the pastors have become brutish. And have not sought the Lord. Therefore, they shall not prosper. And all their flocks shall be scattered. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5. Thus says the Lord. Cause it be the man that trusteth a man. And that maketh flesh his arm, his strength. Whose heart departed from the Lord. You know, there are some people, their hearts depart from the Lord. And they don't seek the Lord anymore. They depend upon the arms of the flesh. For ye shall be like the hairs in the desert. And shall not see when good cometh. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness. And in a salt land. And not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. Do you trust in the Lord? You are blessed already. You trust in the power of God. You start, trust in the promises of God. Blessed is a man that trusted in the Lord. And whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. And that spreadeth out a root by the river. I shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaves shall be green. I shall not be careful, will not be worried in the year of drought, and neither shall cease from yielding fruit. We're going to bear fruit. I come to point number three now. The all-inclusive prosperity for seekers of God in prayer. The all-inclusive prosperity for seekers of God in prayer. Those who seek the Lord, you seek Him with all your heart, diligently, with faith, with trust, 
but confidence. We're looking at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. Tonight you are going to seek and you are going to find. And then it says unto him that knocketh, it shall be opened. We're talking about prosperity. And this kind of prosperity is not a one-sided prosperity. We're talking about all-inclusive prosperity. For your spirit. For your soul. For your body. For the work of your hand. For every member of your family. Spiritual as well as natural. Prosperity is a desirable thing if it is all inclusive. Those who are rich in gold. But who are not rich in grace. Not rich in godliness. Not rich in goodness. Cannot have complete happiness and fulfillment. As we look at Sir John verse 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things, I pray, above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. There you have material prosperity, you have spiritual prosperity, and then you have health. That is true prosperity. And that is what the Lord has promised and provided. This is what we can seek with great unshakable assurance and we shall find. We're going to find it in Jesus' name. A life that is rich in faith. A life that is rich in faithfulness will be fruitful. The combination of faith and fruitfulness in our lives will have fulfillment, will have fullness and also will flourish. His soul will not know the plight of spiritual farming, and his body will not experience the pain of economic drought. As he abounds in the fruit of the Spirit, so will he have abundant fruit in the work of his hands. Those who pray and seek God with the whole heart will not seek him in vain. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 19. I said chapter 45 verse 19 I said not unto the seed of Jacob Seek him in vain All who truly seek the Lord Shall be abundantly satisfied With the fatness of his house And thou shalt make them drink The river of thy pleasures The provision of God Is so abundant and in inexhaustible That none of us ought to lack spiritually And this year You will not lack spiritually You will not lack in any area of your life We can be holy We can be happy We can be healthy Now and throughout our lives If we seek the Lord It's going to be so in Jesus name Job chapter 5 we're looking at Job chapter 5. And look at the prosperity, the promise of God, the provision of God for the people that seek the face of the Lord, that seek Him the way the Lord wants us to seek Him. In Job chapter 5, I'm reading from verses 8 and 9. I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause, which doeth God. Great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. Marvelous things, wonderful things, tremendous things without number. When you seek unto the Lord, Job chapter 8 from verse 5. Job chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 5. If thou wouldest seek unto God betimes, that is, you seek him now, you seek him again, you seek him again, you seek him again, you keep on seeking him. If thou wouldest seek unto God betimes, and make thy supplication to the Almighty, if thou wert pure and upright, surely now he would awake for thee. And make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. Though thy beginning was small, yet 
thy latter end shall greatly increase. And you know what you are today when I see you tomorrow, another time, another week, another month, you will have climbed higher on the ladder of success in Jesus' name. Thy latter end should greatly, greatly increase. Just seek the Lord and you are going to find that the Lord will be merciful, will be marvelous in your life in Jesus' name. I'm looking at a question in John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And we're looking at verse 38. John chapter 1. Verse 38. Then Jesus turned and said unto them, them following, and says unto them, What seek ye? What seek ye? The Lord has said, Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And it says, For everyone that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. And then Caesar has told us to seek, and it shall be given unto us. The question is coming from the Lord, What seek ye? We need to answer that question before we pray. What are you seeking? The Lord has told us. First Chronicles chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 11. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. If there's anything we need to seek in this new year, we need to seek the strength of the Lord, the power of the Lord, divine enablement divine energy divine power and then we become strong against any opposition any force seek the lord seek a stress what are we seeking what seek ye matthew chapter 6 and i'm reading there from verse 31 what seek ye in Matthew chapter 6 verse 30, one therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith that shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things, all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What seek ye? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's how to have multiplied blessings upon your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What seek ye? Jeremiah chapter 45. In Jeremiah chapter 45, I'm reading from verse 5. Jeremiah 45, verse 5. And seekest thou great things for thyself, seek them not. Seekest thou great things only for thyself, like Absalom, seekest thou a great position just for thyself, seek them not. Like Korah, Desan, Nabiram, not considering the glory of God, not considering the prosperity of the Israel, the people of God, only for themselves. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. How am I going to have great things if I don't seek them for myself? Remember Solomon? What do you want? Lord, I want you to give me wisdom, not for my sake, but for the people of God's sake, so that I'll be able to guide and lead the people of God in the right direction. God said, because you didn't ask great things for yourself, but you are asking for my glory and for the prosperity of the people of God. What you have asked, I give you. And the things you have not asked, I'm going to give you. You'll be richer than any king that ever lived. Seekest thou great things for your selfish consumption alone? Seek them not. What seekest thou? Luke chapter 19. In Luke chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek... 
and to save that which was lost. Like Jesus Christ, seek the lost souls. Be committed and be given to evangelism this year. As we are taking care of the expansion of the kingdom of God, God will take care of the expansion of your business. The expansion of your family. And the expansion of the work of your hand in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you. I will not be bodysome unto you, for I seek not yours but you. I seek not yours but you. When you go to evangelize, don't seek. What belongs to them? I like this, your car. If you give your life to the Lord, can you give the car to me? I like this, your dress. Can you give this to me? I seek not yours, but you. You're seeking for the souls. You're not seeking for their substance. What do you seek? You're seeking for souls like Jesus Christ said, I am come to seek and to save that which is lost. What seek ye? Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Spiritual things. Seek those things which are above. That's what you seek. And where Christ seated on the right hand of God, set your affection on things above. And not on things on the earth. Make sure that this year spiritual things are number one in your life. What seek ye? First Corinthians chapter 14. In First Corinthians chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 12. Even so ye, for as much as she as zeal of spiritual gifts seek, that she may excel to the edifying of the church. Seek this year for spiritual gifts. That your ministry, that your service, that your involvement, that your commitment to the work of the Lord in the church will be of tremendous benefit to the people of God. Seek that she may excel to the edifying, the building up. The development of the church, the body of Christ. What seek ye? Hebrews chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. You want to get to heaven? What if you have all the money in the world and then you miss heaven? What if you have the greatest job on earth and you miss heaven? What if you have the most beautiful wife on earth and the most handsome man on earth and you miss heaven? What if you have more children than any other person on earth and you miss heaven? As you seek, make sure that the number one thing you have, you're seeking for heavenly things. And here it says, here we have no continuing city. We're not going to live here forever. But we'll seek one to come. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 14. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire to seek a better country that is unheavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. And for he has prepared for them a city. There's a place in heaven prepared for you. You will be there. I said you will be there. So the Lord is saying, set your affection on heavenly things, on spiritual things, on those things above, and not on things on the earth. And then as you set your affections on things above, everything you need here on earth, before we go there, everything the Lord will give unto you. Why don't you rise up and now we're going to pray. You're going to tell the Lord, oh Lord, here am I today. Thank you for all that we have learned for the revelation of the word of God. Seek and ye shall find. Seek and ye shall find. Open your 
your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. But don't start with money. Don't start with wife. Don't start with children. Don't start with job. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then after that, all these other things shall be added unto you. Open your mouth and pray. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. This year is going to be a glorious year. He says it's going to be a wonderful year. And the Lord is going to pour down his blessings abundantly upon every one of us this year in Jesus' name. Raise your hands to the Lord. We're going to pray together. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Now I told you to raise up your hand. That's all right. Now you stretch out the hand towards me here. I see if I'm giving you something. This hand of yours will hold blessing today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you at this time. I glorify your name. Lord Jesus, these are your people. They have come to you. The children of the Heavenly Father. Oh Lord, I pray there will be no limitation or lack or loss this year. In Jesus' name, all defeat is turned to victory. All failure is turned to success. Poverty to prosperity. All the sickness is gone in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray miracle for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray holiness you give unto them. Righteousness you give unto them. The power of the Holy Ghost anointing from on high, from the top of their head to the tip of their toe. Anoint them in Jesus' name. These hands, they are stretching out. These hands are anointed. They shall lay those hands on the sick in their houses. And they shall recover in Jesus' name. This year, every revival service they hold well, will not lack testimony. Of great miracles of the Lord in Jesus' name. And these mouths that are saying amen, anoint the mouth. When they preach the word of God, it will take effect in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray promotion for everyone. Those who don't have any job, you told us to seek. We have sought the kingdom. All the other things are added. Give them the jobs in Jesus' name. Why pull their tears away? This year, you will not cry a cry of sorrow. Only joy. Only laughter. Only happiness. And you will have a testimony in Jesus' name. Any terminal disease, I cut it up. Heal them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, your power will never fail in their lives. As they are going back home, Lord, go with them. And all the enemies of the past year, they are conquered, they are defeated. You go from victory to victory. From success to success. This year will be the best year you have ever lived. A year of miracle, a year of power. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray.